You guys, we are over a thousand people strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. I am so humbled, I'm so excited. And so I figured, you know, there's a thousand of you guys who have decided to subscribe to my channel and some of you guys don't really know anything about me. So let's do a get to know me tag. So my name is Adana and I am 30, how old am I? I'm 31. <laughs> I'm 31. I be forgetting you guys. Like uh, birthdays just run together after about 28, and so um, I'm I'm 31. I just turned 31 this year, and yeah, that's me. I started studying medicine. Um, I uh, I don't know. Like well, technically in undergrad. Um, yeah, technically, I was more so like a pre-med major. I was biomedical sciences with an emphasis in pre-med um, because I originally wanted to be an OBGYN, um, but that's when I started taking my pre-wax, pre what is that? I started taking my prerequisite courses in undergrad um, and I was in kind of like an expanded science and math program where I was able to take um, a heavier load freshman and sophomore year and literally I think I had maybe like one class my second semester of senior year so it worked out pretty well so I chose medicine because um, I just love the field uh, I it was either medicine or being a lawyer and I don't know if that was kind of just ingrained in me because I'm from the islands and like you're only making something, you're only living life if you're either a lawyer or a doctor. Um, so I don't know uh, if that was just kind of the thought that was ingrained in my head, but those, I literally gravitated to those two fields because I liked to argue slash like prove a point. Um, and then I also like to help people, but I ultimately settled on medicine because um, my sister actually had an experience where she was helped tremendously by her physicians um, and I liked the research aspect of it and that kind of just pointed me towards the medical field. So I think about maybe sophomore year of high school is when I really decided that I wanted to be in medicine. <laughs> username because it's me I'm Adana and I'm going to be a PA so it's literally I just wanted to do something that was simple and it was gonna talk about specifically what you were gonna be seeing on my channel which is stuff about me becoming a PA so it was really simple um, not a hard d decision at all and that's really we just kind of was like, okay, your name's Adana and you want to be a PA. So the channel is going to be called Adana the PA. So my channel is a channel literally about me and what I have experienced so far, um, trying to get into PA school, being in PA school, and then it will transition to now me being out of PA school and um, probably being in my doctoral program and then into the field. It's literally just um, the journey of Adana into PA-hood. Um, so you're gonna get tidbits of information that I wish I had when I was applying to school because I was doing a lot of research for different information that I could get on, you know, great interview tips and, you know, how to get really good healthcare hours and what constitutes a healthcare hour, what constitutes a great application. And I couldn't really find information about that when I was applying to PA school. Um, and I couldn't find um, people that look like me, you know, like <laughs> that I couldn't really talk to about PA school. So I was like, I want to do that for somebody else because I wish that I had this when I was applying to PA school. And so that's what my channel is. My channel is about me being in PA school and giving you guys the 
ins and outs of PA school that I wish I had, um, while also giving you guys an insight into my life now as a mom, wife, PA student trying to navigate this whole PA school life. My favorite quote, what is my favorite quote? Um, so I don't even know what my favorite quote is, I guess, but there is a quote that I have been quoting a lot lately and I really like it. Um, it's been kind of like <laughs> holding on to me um, because PA school is hard, you guys. Um, it's not easy, but uh, you have to stick through it. Um, so this, this quote, which it's by um, Eric Thomas, and he says, it's like a little snippet, but he says, when you want to breathe, no, look at me. He says, when you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe. So basically, I mean, what it's saying is that if you're trying to succeed as much as you want to breathe, because there's not a moment, like if you're drowning, you want to breathe so badly. And that's kind of the image that it has with that quote. It has somebody kind of trying to get up for air. And if you want to, if you're drowning, you want to breathe so badly, you're going to do anything. You're going to fight. You're going to grind to get up above water to actually breathe. And that's the same thing that you need to do when you're trying to succeed in life. And that is what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna be scraping, I'm gonna be losing sleep, I'm gonna be waking up really early in the morning, but I have to, there are things that I have to do um, I have to sacrifice because I want to succeed at this thing called being a PA. So um, that's really what I've been holding on to these past few, I think months or so, just in the last couple months, I've kind of been quoting that a lot. My best memory in PA school so far has been my white coat ceremony. You guys, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Um, although not all of my family could be there because my mom was in Trinidad. Sad times, you guys. My mom didn't see me walk across the stage um, to get my white coat, but I did videotape it. And um, if you guys haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link for it where you can see me getting my white coat. Um, but I videotaped it and she was able to see that and she said she was very proud. But that literally was like my best moment so far. Um, it came right after we finished our first semester of PA school, such a hard semester. Um, and that white coat ceremony was just like, here you go, you've done it. You have made it through this first semester. You can do this. It was just kind of like validation that you can be a PA and you can be an amazing PA and you're going to be an amazing PA. Here's your white coat. So that literally was my favorite experience thus far in PA school, getting my short white coat. So one course that I've struggled with in PA school um, was actually physical diagnosis. Um, you know, I really didn't think that it was going to be like a course where I'm like, oh man, like I really have to like study hard for this. Um, I thought my medical practice course where it teaches you everything about the different disease process, like the patho and, and you know, epidemiology and those different things that you're going to need to know and how to treat the particular disease. disease. Um, I thought that was going to be my hardest course, but um, it didn't. It's, it's actually, it was actually like the course that I did the best in. Um, but the physical diagnosis course where it's talking about like, what are the physical characteristics or the symptoms that these patients are gonna show up with, which is very important, um, has actually been the course that I've had to put the most work in. Um, and it's still some, a course that I have to put a lot of work in. And it will probably be another course again, cause I'll have to take it again next semester um, that I'll have to put a lot of work in. But it's essential for becoming a PA and being a PA because not only do you need to know um, how to take a good HPI, but you also need to know like what are the physical 
physical signs that these patients are going to come in with what are they going to look like you know what is the lesion going to look like for a basal cell carcinoma or um, a squamous cell carcinoma so things like that and you know i appreciate it I, you have to struggle so i appreciate the struggle um i'd appreciate a lot less of it but i appreciate the struggle <music> is my favorite book okay so I'm gonna answer this for like I'm gonna answer my favorite book for life <laughs> and then I'm gonna answer my favorite book for school so my favorite book for life is the Bible okay like I love the Bible um, it helps me out so much it keeps me grounded I love the scripture I read it every day and um, it really motivates me and it um, just helps me make it through my day I don't know how I would do it if I wasn't like having devotion every morning um, and then going to church every weekend I really would I don't, I don't know I don't know how to make it in this this whole PA thing but that is my favorite book for life. So if you don't own one, go get one. Um, but for school, where is my book? Let me, you guys, this is my favorite book. What is this book called? It is called Pants Prep Pearls. This is my favorite book, you guys, for PA school. Um, it's amazing. If you don't have one and you are in PA school, you're missing out. You need to go get one. Um, if you don't have one and you're trying to get in PA school, you're missing out. You need to go get one because it really helps you just kind of condense everything down. Um, I know it's going to be my best friend when I'm trying to take the pants. Um, and it's my best friend right now as I go through PA school because it really helps you to just kind of get the pearls, hence the name Pants Prep Pearls, um, that you need when trying to figure out what disease is going on in your patient. So that is my favorite book, Pants Prep Pearls by Dwayne A. Williams. Go get yours today at Barnes & Noble's. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's at Barnes & Noble's, but go get yours today. time I sleep <laughs> no I I try to sleep but in my free time I spend as much time with my family as I possibly can so we go to church we you know go for a little drives here and there we'll go to Rita's um, take the kids to the park but just trying to decompress and make sure that I'm able to spend time with my family um, as much as I possibly can because I'm in school over eight, I'm just in school learning eight hours a day. And then even after school, I stay back and I study for another two hours or so, um, you know, three hours, depending on if we have an exam, a really hard exam. So it's hard, but you, I, I have to make the time for my family. And so any free time that I get, I spend with them because, you know, they're going through this experience with me and I can get disenchanted because I am in school all day. Um, so I can easily kind of just start going through the motions and I don't want to I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that they understand and they know that I'm still here for them. I'm still mom. I'm still wife. Still doing my wifely and mom duties. Um, and um, and that's and and this is all for them basically. But that's what I'm, I do in my free time. I spend time with my family. So what do I want to specialize in? I don't know. Um, I spend a lot of time shadowing surgical PAs and I really like that. Um, at Holy Cross, it was really a great experience. They had like a surgical, they had like a surgical unit and they just had a unit of PAs that would go in and they would assist on different surgeries. And I like that. I like that I could go from seeing, you know, an amputation to a hysterectomy to a salp a salpingectomy or, you know, whatever it is, all in a matter of a week. You know, um it it was different. It varied from day to day. My experience um and I like that. So uh, I, I really like the model that they have, but I don't know if that's a model that is everywhere. So I don't want to feel like 
slighted. Like I'm going in, I'm like, yeah, I want to be a surgical PA because it's everything. I'm going to be able to see everything, but then I'm only stuck in one aspect of surgery. Um, so I don't know. I think maybe I might start off in like the ED or primary care just so that I'm able to see a lot and just get that general basis and foundation. And then um, I don't know where I would go next, but I'm excited to see. And I will figure all of that out when I start my rotations next year. So excited, you guys. Uh, two more semesters until that happens, but really excited about that. Um, but get at me then and get at me in like a year from today and we'll do another one of these and maybe I might have a better idea of what I want to um, specialize in initially. Ah, who do I look up to? It's kind of tough. Like, I, like let me just, I'll just say, I really look up to my husband. Like, he is a fighter, you know? Like, I appreciate his drive and his grind. Like, that kind of helped me stay motivated because it was, it was easy. Like, I wasn't in school for a long time. I was, I, I had to do, like, the supporting for a long time. While and it's easy to kind of give up on your goals, your desires, because you don't see um, how God is moving in your life or you don't see things happening in the time period that you want it to happen in. So um, it was it's easy to kind of just lose hope and lose faith in that. But like my babe, like he I don't know, he was he's been trying to do like, you know, acting and filmmaking and stuff for a little minute. And then he was like, he just kept doing like, he don't care. You know, like if he'll do something and then uh, he'll put it out there and then he'll keep moving. He's not waiting for somebody to say yes. He's going and making his own path. And I really appreciate that. And I admire that. And that's something that I kind of um, try to model myself in life. Just not sitting up here trying to wait for somebody to tell me yes. Just putting out what I need to and then moving on in faith on the next project while God works that out. I'm leaving God. I'm leaving that up for God to work out. And then... I'll, I'll keep moving and if he wants me to handle that or if he wants that to come my way, it'll come my way. So I'm gonna go with my babe. I look up to my babe. Good old aunt. I see you recording it and you know, doing your thing. <laughs> So how do I study productively? Um, you take a lot of great notes. Get a lot of highlighters, um, colorful highlighters, colorful pens, um, and highlight things different colors, you know, because the different colors will mean different things. Um, the pens help. Like, I love colorful pens. I write a lot um, of things in different colors because it just pops and it makes me focus on something a lot more than just the plain black and blue. But um, I take notes. Um, I think I take really good notes, but I make the notes personal to me, you know, that I will understand and things that I feel are super important. I'll bold them and highlight them um, in my notes. And then when I print them out, I'll highlight them in a color and star them. But it's really just making sure that you're getting the key points because there's so much information and you can get really inundated with all of this information and just want to know all of the information, but then it kind of just overwhelms you and that's not good. So rather than getting overwhelmed with all of the information that is being thrown at me, I try to compartmentalize. I'll if I know I have um, a patho exam on Wednesday, I'll study for that on Monday and Tuesday. Um, really, really hard on Tuesday, but let's say I had a med practice exam on Monday, I will study for med practice over the weekend and I'm not studying necessarily for patho because I know med practice is coming first. So it's really about managing your time understanding what is more important at that moment in time, studying for that, um, making sure that you're using your time productively, and then 
moving on. But that's really, I feel like, how I'm productive in my studying. Um, and I'll split my time up as well with respect to group study and self-study because group study is very helpful when you kind of know the information and you just kind of bounce things off of your peers and make sure that you guys are on the you know you're on the right path um but group study can be very detrimental um if you aren't sure about the information that you were studying because people can confuse you so manage my, your time very well and that's really how i study productively <laughs> I stay motivated in PA school. Um, I look at the end goal, you guys. Like at the end of this, I want to be a great practitioner. I want to be out there in the clinical realm, just helping people. And um, I, I just remember where I was like five months ago. You know, I remember what I was doing. Um, where I was working, you know, the hours I was working, what I was thinking when I saw physicians and PAs and NPs and nurses in their careers, um, loving what they're doing and me kind of not being happy where I was at um, and, and longing for this. And that's really what keeps me motivated because I don't wanna go back to where I was. I, I wanna push forward. And the fact that I've been blessed to be in this position to actually be, become a PA, I can't squander that opportunity. I can't take it for granted. And so I literally think about this all the time. I'm still on a high that I was able to get into PA school and um, it's crazy, again, that I've been in PA school for almost half a year. That's mind boggling, um, but I'm excited and I understand the magnitude of this opportunity. I understand how great of um, a chance that I have and an opportunity that I have right now that a lot of people wanted and did not attain this year. And so, I, I stay motivated. I stay motivated because I am I am living my dream right now. So I'm living my my dream path. I'm on my way. So I can't there's no way. There's nothing but motivation. Even in those tough days, you're like, would you rather be sitting at a desk, you know, working and getting, you know, registering people to come into the clinic? Nah, I'd rather be here crying because I have an ortho exam that is gonna be a beast. I'd rather be doing that. My best tips for future PAs. Um, my best tips for future PAs is to do your research. I always say this to you guys, do your research. Um, research what schools you want to go to, what areas you wanna be in, um, kind of do some self researches as well. Look at yourself and see like your personality and where you will thrive and then apply to schools in those areas. Um, shadow lots of PAs, look at the profession, understand the, the profession that you're trying to get into and the changes that are being made in the profession because they will affect how you're able to practice in the future. Um, and also just stay motivated. Look at the end goal. Um, yes, school may be hard right now, but PA school's not easy, so get used to it, right? You know, stay motivated, work hard, and, and do what you need to do to get to where you wanna go. Um, and that's really like the best tips that I could possibly give you. Have a great support system, stay motivated, do your research, and you're golden. You got this. I have two kids, two little girls, two little girly girls, and a husband and a puppy time, my little dog, Kiki, and um, I love them dearly. It is not necessarily always easy having a family um, in PA school because you have to know how to balance your time, but I do it because I 
love them and I love this profession and I wouldn't have it any other way. All right, you guys, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys got to know me a little bit better and hopefully some of the things that I said in this was helpful to any future PAs out there. Um, if you have any questions for me that you want me to answer, I can probably do another one of these in the near future um, and we could probably do it live, you know? So leave those comments in the, leave those questions in the comment section below and um, depending on how many we get and uh, how soon we get them, we might be able to do another one of these. Just a quick Q&A, not even necessarily a get to know me, but a Q&A session with Adana. So leave those in the comment section below and um, I'll be sure to get back to them, okay? Also, thank you guys again. I am so happy. I'm so grateful, you guys. Like, I don't, you guys, look at my cheeks. My cheeks are like high and they're hurting right now because I'm just smiling because I'm really, really humbled and really grateful for the fact that over a thousand of you have subscribed and decided to join me on this journey. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, this is for you. Hopefully you guys really appreciate it. And, um, Thank you guys for watching and subscribing. Um, if you haven't already done so and you are currently watching this, go ahead and subscribe um, and join me on this journey. And go ahead and hit up my Instagram because I do have an Instagram, you guys. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And thank you again. Uh, really appreciate you guys. I will talk to you guys next week, bring you guys some more videos. And um, we're having fun. We're having a blast on this journey, right? So let's do this. All right, you guys, I will talk to you guys later.